Okay, so we want to talk about um, frequently used uh, CTCSS and DCS tones on the FRS channels um, and how to program a radio to, um, to cut down other interference to take it off the default tones. So these are the most commonly found tones. Um, 67.0 on all frequencies, all 22, and then this set of these set of tones here. So um, for channels one through seven, as well as channel eighteen and channel twenty-two, um, these you may recall are the default uh, PF eight 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 S or the original one. Um, channel six four six two six two five one twenty-seven point three, and channel seven four six two seven two five one thirty-six five. Some of these uh, Retivas radios actually have 462625 programmed in twice um, with an inverted uh, DPL or DCS tone, which on some radios will decode as a 252 uh, under the normal um, DCS polarity. So it'll show up as 252, just like 731 inverted will show up as 155, 243 inverted will show up as 351. Um, 332 inverted will show up as 455, and uh, 731 inverted will show up as 654. Um, sometimes it will show up correctly depending on what receiver you're using or what decoder you're using to um, decode the, uh, the tone. Uh, one thing I've noticed is uh, this is a very popular one, um, 606 on uh, 462.6275. Um, and then these are other ones, uh, this is the one, the 22 channel ones that have, uh, hard-coded tones. So 8 is, uh, 243 normal, uh, polarity, 032 for 9, normal polarity, normal, normal, normal. These are all normal polarity, um, and then it goes back to kind of this weird combination of CTCSS, inverted polarity DCS, and regular DCS, so, um, uh, this is from the HF Underground wiki page. It's got a lot of information about like factory out of the box frequencies, um, and it's a good place to start. So, the thing you want to do when it comes to programming radios is not use these tones um, because chances are you're going to get interference from somebody who bought their radio and did not change the um, CTCSS or DCS tones. So, with that in mind, uh, we're going to use our look at our example radios here, and I've got the um, the 16 channel, you know, Baofeng BF888 type um, radio. Uh, right now, I have the um, FRS one through seven, and then GMRS. But obviously, you could program, you know, FRS channel eight in here. And uh, let's say you wanted to program in a, um, a GMRS repeater. Uh, again, presuming that you are licensed for GMRS, you'd go to duplex, positive, change the offset to 5.0, and change the deviation or mode from NFM, narrow FM to FM, and then of course you could change the power from low to high if you really, really want to. Um, that's just an example. I'm going to go back to none, and you'll see the uh, split goes away. Um, for GMRS repeater usage, the offset is always five, and the split or the 
um, it's a positive, so it's five, it adds five megahertz. Transmit is five plus five megahertz. So, so you have a repeater on 462.675. The input is that plus five megahertz, which is 467.675. Um, you do not want to run uh, simplex on any of the repeater inputs. It's stupid. And, um, just don't do it. So these are your options. Um, tone, which is just transmitting a tone, so receive is carrier squelch, which means you'll, you'll hear everything on the frequency regardless of um, what tone or, or, or DT, or D, they call it DTCS, but it's DCS or DPL, um, they're using on the frequency, or if they're not using one at all. Uh, T-squel is, uh, tone squelch, which is transmit and receive squelch, uh, which is what I recommend using. Um, so basically, you just want to use tones that are not the default tones. Don't use 67.0. Don't use 118.8 on channel 2. Um, you are often better off using a non-standard tone, and those are 165.5. Excuse me, 159.8, and then some of these extra ones. This one is a non standard, and then you have our friend 69.3. Um, another thing you can do is do control A, whoops, select one, control A, that selects all, right click, go to properties, and then you can do tone mode, tone squelch, tone squelch, and set the same tone squelch for all frequencies, boom. Okay, and then it just did that for all of them. Um, this is good if you want to just simplify things. You know, you're using the same tone for all channels. Um, it is also good to get an idea of which frequencies are most commonly used in your area. Uh, in most areas, you'll find that um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then 15 through 22 are the most commonly used. The reason for that is those are the ones that higher power is allowed on. Um, the inverse of that is that 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are often very quiet. So these are, you know, for business use or for whatever, um, these are actually good frequencies to use. And especially if you run a tone that's not, you know, a standard tone or 67.0 or no tone. Um, again, it's, you know, uh, 118.8 for channel 2, 127.3 for channel 3. Those are the default tones and codes. Those are the ones you don't want to use, especially on 1 through 7 and um, 15 through 22, because uh, these are the big ones. There's often a lot of activity on that, a lot of activity here, and then boom, 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 boom. These often have a lot of activity with these codes. So, um, yeah, just something to keep in mind. You know, don't use 123.0 if you're using 462550. Just use a different, different tone. You've got 50, you know, CTCSS tones to choose from. Just, you know, don't use that one or, and don't use 67.0. Um, another word of caution is if you decide to use the frequency, which is channel 20, avoid use of one forty one point three. That is the GMRS calling frequency and tone. Um, you know, 
or you could go with the option of, okay, I'm going to make, you know, channel 15, FRS channel 1, and then I'm going to make channel 16, channel 20, and then these will be the calling channels if you want to have that capability. And if you do do that, I recommend switching it to tone mode so you can hear everything that's on the channel. And this also means that anyone who has their radio on tone on carrier squelch will also just, you know, they'll hear you because um, they'll hear any transmission regardless of what the tone is. So, you know, this is your standard, you know, chirp setup. Um, I can uh, go into the ECS, but I really feel there's really no need. Uh, again, um, there are other tones and codes that are used often, but uh, the ones that I showed you are the most common by a long shot. Um, again, that's 67.0, carrier squelch or no tone, um, and then the uh, Baofeng and the Retivus defaults, which are the ones that I, I showed before. Um, so, yeah. If you can avoid using those, you will, you know, almost certainly, not certainly, but there's always a chance that there's somebody else in your area that happens to be using the same tone, um, you know, have no issues with, with interference because of someone using the same tone. Uh, it's a lot easier to simply change your tones um, and avoid use of a commonly used frequency such as FRS Channel 1, um, which is the most popular one. That's what radios are on when they turn on, or they're turned on. Uh, do not operate in the amateur bands. Don't do it. Uh, don't transmit on random frequencies that you don't know what they're allocated to. Uh, this means anything between 400 and 420, uh, anything between 420 and 450. Um, and anything in the in the public safety frequencies, um, anything between 453 and 454, anything between 458 and 459, anything between 460 and uh, 460.9, anything between 465 and 465.9. Um, do not use those frequencies. Um, they are public safety frequencies. The Licensed users of them will find you pretty quickly, especially if you talk a lot, um, and uh, they'll they'll go after you because uh, the FCC grants um, exclusive rights to a given frequency uh, in an area. Another thing to be mindful of is the default frequencies in the Baofeng radios. Um, several of them are repeater inputs, including. Uh, 456.525, that's a business repeater input, and if there happens to be a business user of that frequency, um, namely 451.525, uh, and you're interfering with their repeater, uh, they won't like that, and they are, they are in a position to um, easily figure out where you're transmitting from, if you think about how repeaters work. Um, also, when there is 458.725, which is a public safety repeater input for 453.725. Um, I've actually heard that frequency used in my area, and there happens to be a state-owned repeater on that frequency. In fact, there's several. Um, one, in, one belonging to the State Department of Corrections. Uh, so, they would not appreciate you transmitting on their frequency, and uh, they will catch you. Um, just because you can't hear them because you're running a tone squelch doesn't mean they can't hear you. Um, all right, well, I'll get off my soapbox now, but this is kind of a, a primer on using the FRS frequencies on non-standard, non-default out-of-the-box tones to avoid interference, um, you know, from other folks using the default tones while, uh, you know, for business purposes or, or what have you, using a, a BF888 or uh, uh, these loop 
uh, Louis Tuan or whatever the hell they're called. Um, uh, the Radio Diddy uh, GA2S radios. Um, uh, the HYT, there's a lot of them, but uh, Arc Shell. Um, there's a bunch of them, but uh, they are all the same firmware um, as the BF888, BF666, BHD8, B828, BF9700, um, LT458, LT318. They're all the same firmware, and you can program them with Jerk. Um, so there is no real reason to, you know, use a random frequency. Be oh well, there's someone using an interference. That's because you're using the default tone. Um, and do a little scanning, do a little monitoring, and find out which frequencies are busy in your area, and just don't use those frequencies. Uh, there are going to be clear frequencies. There's 22 channels to work with here. Um, 50 CTCSS tones, uh, plus, you know, when you include inverted, you're looking at hundreds of, of selective calling combinations. There's also other selective calling options if you really want to get into it, and I can get into that in a later video, but there's no real reason to uh, to bootleg a frequency for these kinds of purposes, for talk around purposes or whatever. Um, it's just not worth the risk when, when you can happily uh, you know, run, I'm just going to park this thing on FRS1 right now, um, a non-standard CTCSS tone or run a DCS tone, uh, that isn't one of the ones that the radio has come pre-programmed with, so I'll get off my soapbox, but, uh, hopefully this is helpful to some folks. Thank you. Until next time.